Hi, it's Don Davis. Just wanted to take a few minutes of your time to talk about the use of Texas Instruments TI-84 SmartView Emulator. So um, this, by emulator, I mean uh, this is a computer program that mimics what a, our Texas Instruments TI-84 calculator does. Uh, we can get this from the campus network. We have a site license for it, so any room that we go into that has a uh, laptop connected to the network um, can use this software. Now, uh, let me go over a couple of things to get started with it. Uh, a couple of things, just first from the view menu, we can adjust the size of the calculator and also adjust the background color of the calculator too. There are other options I'll talk about in a few minutes. A uh, few minutes here. Let me get the calculator up so you can take a look at it. There it is. So first, let me just, uh, I, I think I said in the view menu, we could talk about the size of it. This is the medium size here. This is good if you have an ebook up and uh, you have some uh, questions over here on part of the screen. And you can have your calculator up on uh, uh, you know, the other part of the screen. You can also make it smaller. It's kind of hard for the students to look at, but you get more screen revenue, uh, uh, more screen area to work with. And then you can also make it real large if you have to uh, uh, emphasize certain keystrokes. But uh, like I said, I kind of like to use the medium size for the calculator. And you can also adjust the color on this palette, um, you know, the, the background of it, so to speak. I uh, you know, usually use the blue color because it kind of has a nice contrast with these second keys. So you can adjust that as well. Now, um, one thing nice about the calculator is that you know you can you can really have students see the keystrokes, and uh, it's really easy for them to to follow along with what you're doing. Let's take a look at that with an example here. First, uh, we want to use our calculator to evaluate this expression and write it as a proper fraction. So let's go ahead and do that now. So I'll go ahead and, and uh, clear the screen, and we'll go ahead and enter our expression. 1 minus 1 over 3 squared. Go ahead and hit the Enter key. And notice here we get a repeating decimal number and now we want to make that a fraction and what I always tell the students is to hit the math key and hit the enter key twice and they kind of wonder why I would say such a thing so uh, you can show them with the emulator here if you hit the math key notice here option one is the fraction converter so I'll hit um, enter the first time to call that up and now if we hit enter the second time that goes ahead and uh, converts that repeating decimal into a proper fraction so that's one thing real nice about the calculator to begin with is it's very easy for students to follow the keystrokes. Now um, a couple other enhancements that the calculator has is the key press history and the large screen. So let me show you how that works with an example here. Um, both of those by the way are in the view menu as well. You'll see what I mean here in just a minute. Notice here we have two functions. Absolute value of x is f of x and g of x is f of x minus 5. So think about we'd want to do uh, uh, kind of an example uh, involving transformations of functions here. So we want to graph both of these in the same viewing window. So to do that, we'll go ahead and hit the y equals menu and go to the uh, math button, the number menu, and absolute value is the first option and we'll go ahead and put in X. And let's go ahead and graph this in the standard viewing window now. So I'll just go ahead and hit zoom and option 6 for the standard viewing window. And now notice if I go to the view menu and go to the show and hide key press history, notice there I get the large screen of um, exactly what we're looking at over here with the small screen. So that's real good if we have uh, functions that have a lot of um, behavior about them. It's a lot easier for a student to see that uh, in the classroom if we have this large screen up. Now one, uh, one thing I usually find that's kind of a struggle for students is to 
put in this second function in the transformation. Think of what we want to do here. We want to put in y1 minus 5. So that's where the key press history really comes into play here. It's recorded everything I did, so I'll go ahead and uh, erase that. Down here at the bottom it says clear, clear key press history. So remember what we wanted to do. Put in y1 minus 5. So I'll hit the vars key. Hit the right arrow to go over to y vars. And we want the function menu. So I'll go ahead and hit enter. And we want to choose function 1, so I'll hit the number 1. That's kind of a complicated series of keystrokes for students, I think. So that's where the key press history can really help out. And we want to subtract 5 from that. And notice we can go ahead and go back to our large screen and graph both of those functions in the same viewing window. So that's a, that's a nice use of the key press history and the large screen. Now a couple more things I want to show you here. In addition to that, there's the view cubed menu. And this is, uh, we can put together three view screens together simultaneously. So this comes in handy when we have, um, uh, when we want to toggle back and forth between uh, the graphical aspects and the numerical aspects in a class you know, where we're studying functions like college algebra. So let me show you how that works. Um, here we go with an example three. Let's graph the function f in the standard viewing window. Then in the window negative two to five and then negative five to five. And then let's trace f to show that if f of x is less than zero, that means that the graph is below the x-axis and the function values are negative. And so notice we have a cubic function there. So let's go ahead and put that in first. And I'll just go ahead and turn these two functions off by highlighting over top of the equal sign and pressing enter. Now we'll go ahead and put in our function now, x cubed um, minus 5x squared plus 6x. There we go. And we'll go ahead and hit the zoom key and option 6 to graph in the standard viewing window. Now notice here we have a lot of uh, real estate that we don't need, so I'll go ahead and adjust the viewing window now. And you know what, this would be a good time to show off the uh, view cubed options here. Let's go ahead and turn off the large screen for right now. Now I'll go to the view cubed options, and notice here we can, gr we can uh, uh, show a graph. We can show different things. We can show a stat plot. Well, I want to change to the viewing window. And later on, we'll talk about the function values, so we'll also have the table up there too. So that was uh, view screen and then the view cubed options. Now notice here, if we go to show and hide view cubed, we get those three um, uh, screens up here now. Now let's go ahead and change our viewing window. And those values were um, negative 2 to 5. We'll leave the scale marks at 1. And then negative 5 to 5. And let's go ahead and hit graph now. And notice those get updated at the same time. So we can kind of see the viewing window and the graph at the same time now. Now let's go ahead and, and uh, hit the table set. And we'll start tracing this graph. Oh, let's um, start it at negative 2 where our view screen started. And let's go in increments of 1 half. So I'll go ahead and hit enter. And normally what we do is to um, hit the uh, second key and graph to get our table up here. But notice uh, we can also show the graph because the table of values that we have is down here at the bottom. So it's very easy for us to kind of trace along in the graph of the function and make the argument that when the um, function values are negative, that means that the, uh, the graph of the function is below the x-axis, and that would be the idea we'd be trying to get across there. So there is the uh, overview of the TI-84 view screen uh, emulator.